One of the things that's been on my astronomy bucket list since I was a young kid was go to see the Northern Lights. And in February this year, I finally made the trip. A bunch of us from my astronomy club flew from Shannon, Ireland to London Gatwick, and then a three and a half hour direct flight from London Gatwick to Tromsø, Norway on Norwegian Airlines. We got in at about 12 midnight, and after a long wait for a taxi, we finally got to collect our hire car. Tromsø Airport is only about a 10 minute drive from the town, and then it was another 10 minute drive over the bridge to our Airbnb. We had booked a really nice cabin style house that was really good value, super cozy, modern and well kitted out, and it had an awesome view down to the harbour. But these weren't the kind of views that we came to the Arctic Circle for. We had come for Aurora, and that's exactly what was forecast to be hitting right about now. So after a quick look at the weather maps to find out where there was clear skies, we drove northeast out of Tromso and kept driving on the coast road until there was no more street lights. After about 30 minutes, we found a spot to pull over. At this point, it was approaching 2 a.m., so well past the optimum time. But even at that, there was very little activity in the sky. A little disappointed, we packed up and headed home, ready to try again tomorrow. After a good night's sleep, we headed across the road to the Eurospar, got our supplies and made a breakfast to set us up for the day. We really lucked out with this Airbnb. It was really spacious and we had plenty of room for all of our gear. The balcony was awesome and had a really cool view, even when it was snowing. And snow it did. After a little bit of graffiti fun on our hire car, we decided it was time to head off down to the town. The famous Fjellheisen cable car was directly behind our house, but unfortunately it was closed on the days that we were there. The views from the top are stunning, but obviously it's weather dependent. <laughs> One thing that's not weather dependent apparently is the clothing attire for some of the locals. And we thought us Irish were hardy. Well guys, are you excited to be in Norway? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was naive optimism, but spirits were high as we walked down towards the town. We were discussing whether or not we might need some sort of divine intervention to see the aurora later tonight. Even though the aurora forecast was pretty good, the problem was going to be the clouds. Although Tromso is situated at over 69 degrees north, it has a milder climate than other locations at the same latitude. And this is due primarily to the Gulf Stream. And much like Ireland, that means there's going to be a lot of clouds. Because Tromso is within the Arctic Circle, it's going to experience the midnight sun. This occurs from about 18th of May to the 26th of July, but the mountains in the north block the view of it for a few days. So this means that you can see the midnight sun from Tromso from around the 21st of May to the 21st of July. And owing to Tromso's high latitude, the twilight is really long. So it means there's no real darkness between April to mid-August. If you want to try to see the Northern Lights, don't go into summertime. Sounds obvious, but we actually met a couple of tourists who had made that mistake on a previous visit. The town itself is a really nice mix of old and new. Apparently the city centre has the highest number of old wooden houses in Northern Norway and the oldest house dating from 1789. For lunch we had a hot dog and watched the local crazy people jumping into the Arctic Ocean after their sauna. We had heard the screams earlier coming from the bay and thought maybe there was somebody had an incident but apparently uh, this is what they do for a pastime. As you can see the fish are motionless in this absolutely freezing cold water. I'm sure that plenty of people look at us astronomers and think we're crazy for standing outside in the freezing cold for hours and hours at a time at night. I can see some clear skies over to the west. We're going to be heading in the right direction, Mike. So we've just had a walk around Tromso town and a very nice uh, cup of cocoa and a hot dog. And looking to the west, you can see some clear skies, so hopefully it goes well for later. 
So after only a few short hours of daylight, we made our way back over the bridge to our rented house to have some food and get ready to go aurora hunting. So first stop was a public park at the south. And this is a fairly popular spot for people to go observing aurora in Tromso. There's a nice horseshoe beach where you can set up your camera and get some nice scenic shots. So as soon as we were packed and ready, we headed off in the direction of the park. And after we had found a suitable spot to set up, we started to take some long exposures to see was there any activity. And there was, but the problem was the clouds were obscuring it. So we immediately had to look at the weather satellite maps to try and figure out where was the best place to go to get some clear skies and then head there. So we needed to drive west to have any chance of seeing Aurora tonight. So again, we loaded up our gear as quickly as possible and headed in that direction. And I guess this is what people pay Northern Lights tour companies to do for them, especially if they don't have their own rental car. So as we were driving through the mountains, we realized the clouds had cleared above us. So we pulled over at a spot called Ski Slope. We jumped out of the car and immediately could see Northern Lights right overhead. I tried to take some quick shots, but I messed up the exposure. I was paying more attention to what was above instead of on the screen. At that point, I really didn't care. I was so taken by what I was seeing in the sky. Most of the time, we didn't take any photographs at all. We just stood there staring up at what was happening over our heads. I accidentally recorded some audio on my phone as we jumped out of the car. It gives a flavor for the excitement that was in the air. Wow, <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> Holy, oh, look at it there, look at it there. That. Oh my God, that is the craziest thing I've ever seen. For the next couple of hours, we were treated to an incredible display. I've seen thousands of photos and videos of Aurora over the years, and even caught some really nice displays from Ireland, but very low on the horizon and often just barely visible. Nothing prepared me for seeing this energetic display twisting and writhing overhead. The clouds rolled in, we could still see the aurora dancing behind them, but the night was coming to an end. It was mission accomplished, time to go home. Completely frozen and exhausted, we packed the car and counted our blessings. We were so lucky we got a chance to see them. It was in. <laughs> The next morning we were still buzzing from the night before. So we got up early and headed back into town to do a little bit more exploring. We were lucky last night because it just started snowing as we left. So it didn't really interfere with our drive home, even though a lot of it was underground. We checked the temperature last night and it hit 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minus 17 in real measurements. Only joking, they're driving the wrong side of the road here also. But this part of Norway is steeped in maritime history. And walking around the town, it's clear to see that it's still a huge part of their culture and their tourism. And so did the idea of going on a nighttime cruise. But the weather had taken a bit of a turn, so we decided against it. We were constantly checking the Aurora forecast. And although it looked like it was going to be pretty good for Aurora, the weather was going to be against us. So after some food, we headed to the Polen Museet. That's the Arctic University Museum of Norway to you and me. And man was life tough back in the day. The native Sami, frontiers people and the explorers were hardy. Having only experienced for a couple of days a mild version of the sub-Arctic temperatures that these astronomers would have endured, I left the museum with a profound sense of gratitude for not just the creature comforts that we have today, but also for the advances in telescopes and technology, as I'm sure the local wildlife living in the area are as well. So the museum was well worth a visit, plenty of really good displays and fascinating information. Highly recommend taking a trip there. 
then it was time to make the pilgrimage back over the bridge again to our house, avoiding the grit spreaders, and check the weather. So the aurora forecast for tonight is pretty good, um, but the problem we have right now is that it's snowing, and there are some clear patches coming in, but we don't have any car tonight, so we're just going to have to hope that the uh, the clear patches pass over us and we'll see what happens fingers crossed well the skies did clear up but unfortunately there was no rural activity but one amazing night out of three ain't bad we had an early flight back the next morning so it was time to turn in and say good night Tromso Six AM flights are tough at the best of times, but in a blizzard at minus seventeen degrees adds a whole new dimension to it. Don't ask why I'm only wearing a t-shirt. I like to travel light, and that's the way I'm gonna stay. Rain or Arctic blizzard. Norwegian Airlines are a great company to fly with, and Tromsø Airport is quite small but fully functioning, and they are extending. We were slightly delayed while they cleared the runway and de-iced the plane had never seen this in action before, so it was quite fascinating to watch. And just like that, our three nights aurora chasing in Tromso had come to an end. Will I be back? Absolutely. But next time for longer. More nights simply means more chances to see aurora. And seeing it once is absolutely not enough. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the photos in this video, check out my Flickr. Good luck, aurora chasing and clear skies.